the end here, um, with that is the way those horses' feet are shaped is tied in with their shoulder, as we showed you on the video, okay, and it affects the flight of how their feet go, okay. Um, this is what we like for that horse, that he's got the even hoof pasture and axis down through his toe, his column bones, and down through his heels, where he's got an even arc, okay, which means also as he steps down, he's stepping down on the middle of his foot, on a flat foot where all those bones and tendons and ligaments are laying flat on the ground, um, and he's a smoother horse to ride, okay? In contrast, our horse that has the long toe and the heel that's underneath him, these horses tend, might, they tend to be horses that have fairly decent shoulders, their foot's just shoved out ahead of them, and they will tend to elevate in front and slam that foot down which is going to put pain in the back of those heels, okay? In contrast to your more upright horse, which this is the horse that tends to have a straighter shoulder, his stride you can see is going to be shorter and more up and down, up and down, also putting strain on his heels, but in just a little bit different way than this horse is here, okay? Kind of similar outward signs, but the reason for them are a little bit different, okay? Um, so this guy, you're going to shorten his toe, elevate his heel, like that picture of the horse that I showed you. This guy, they're going to do the opposite, try to lower his heel just a little bit, you know, and that's a concept that many of us know. We're always trying to get more heel on these horses because it seems like they're always too low. Once in a while, you end up one that's too much the other way, and you need to do that. Therapeutic-wise, though, if you, um, it's kind of funny because some horses, we need to elevate their, their, their heels to help them out, just like the one sore horse that I showed you. So it all depends, and it, it, it sometimes, if you have a horse with problems, ends up that you need to get a pretty good working relationship between three people, yourself, your veterinarian, and your farrier, and have a really good relationship so everybody's on the same page about how you're going to make this horse, you know, survive and make him functional to do what you want to do, okay? Um, and that's kind of real important that those three can all work together with the same goal in mind um, to end up horse, a horse that's going to work really good. And sometimes um, it's just a check and balances. Um, I mean, I've had horses that I've watched, just like, for example, the black horse that I told you about, and I thought he was fine, then all of a sudden, boom, wake up call, you know, he's been getting worse and none of us realized it. So it's not like you're pointing the gun to anybody who said they're doing a bad job. Just you're the one that sees that horse all the time and sometimes you notice things or sometimes things start to go haywire and you need to work together and say, you know, this isn't quite right. Maybe we need to try to do something to fix this and, and you know, help this guy and move him on so he'll last a long time um, and do the kinds of things that we want him to do, okay? Um, so with that, I think it's question time and we're not going to keep you here till 9.30. We put 9.30 in case we need it, but um, we'll stay here for questions as long as you want. Yeah, now push your thing down. Other than for corrective action or for trying to correct a problem, if you are just doing pleasure riding and you're not riding on pavement, you're not riding on rocks, you're not riding on really rough ground, mm -hmm. is there any reason why you, why you really should chew your horse? No, no. And I'm glad you brought that out because, you know, we get so hung up on shoes and stuff that it, it let your horse tell you. You know, if they start getting sore, then they might need them. Um, we ride a lot of horses um, that we never put shoes on. For example, our herd at the school is a perfect example. Probably 80% of them are barefoot because they don't need them. And the ones that you see shoes on, I kept bringing up the same ones because for just that particular individual, he needs them. The other thing that we do with them is we put shoes on the front um, if they're sore, if they say they need them. Um, we let the horse basically dictate that. And because ours are turned out in groups and we don't show them, we don't haul them around, we, um, will, we don't shoe them behind because they're turned out in groups and we want them not to have weapons on their back feet as they kick each other, you know. So, I mean, that's the deal. If you're pasture riding them and you just have them, for example, my horses at home, um, we ride them in a sandy arena. They're out there in the pasture, and until maybe we'd start hauling around, they stay barefoot. Um, you know, and there's other things when working with a good, um, oh, this is the same question, okay? You folks in Omaha, I hope I'm addressing the same question because there's was considerations whether to shoe or leave the horse barefoot. Um, and frankly, many folks will tell you the worst thing we do is put shoes on their feet because it will, um, it will at times constrict them and have various problems. And so we leave them barefoot unless there's reason that we need to put shoes on them, you know? And there's a lot of things from where you're going with them, the kind of surfaces are going to be f going on, um, what, uh, 
you know, therapeutic reasons to keep them sound. Is that kind of what you're wondering? Yeah, yeah. And th there's a lot of things that a good shoer can do with some horses to change a little bit of that foot flight. Um, folks with reining horses, you'll see they will put sliding plates on the back where they're a much, all of these were standard shoes. They'll be a very thick shoe um, that the ends, the, the trailers will hang out to help those horses um, slide, you know, as you want a rein horse to do. You don't want those on a cutting horse because they need to be able to grip, you know, with their hind end. And so there's various kinds of things that a good farrier can help work together with you to help horses for various kinds of things that you might want them to do. Um, there's steel shoes, there's aluminum shoes, there's ones with rims, without rims. There's just a variety of different kinds depending on what you're wanting those horses to do. For example, your gated horses, they're going to do stuff totally different than somebody with a Western Pleasure horse is going to do because they're looking for totally different kinds of ways that those horses move and stuff. You know, so there's a lot that you can do. Yep. Um, I have a six month old Arabian. Is there any difference in the care of a, a youngster like that besides just the, the normal care of them? Yeah, and a six month old Arab, um, to me it's mainly keeping them on a regular, good, re regular trimming program. That's at the age where they're still growing and changing, okay? So to me, you really need to watch those horses and keep them trimmed real regular so that you keep them on the positive and straight and not start getting crooked and negative things start happening, okay? And that's what you see sometimes in those young horses is <laughs> we're not doing a lot with them and so we might not watch them as close and as they grow and develop they might start to get a little crooked, okay, and, and, and go negative and so just, you know, every six to eight weeks keep them trimmed. You have a young horse that's maybe a little off and in that first year yeah, trim them and you can help straighten them then, okay, and watch them then. Um, and that's the time that you can do it. Let's see. Okay, this question, I'm not sure, is it Douglas County? Yeah. Okay. Um, they are asking, do judges care whether horses have no shoes, two shoes, or four shoes? Um, I judge quite a bit of horse shows and I can't tell you if they do or not, you know. Um, you usually are looking at the performance of the horse and I don't think if they've got shoes on or off or anything it makes any difference to you, you know. Um, you're looking for whatever class that it might be and um, whether a horse has shoes on or off is no criteria that you're ever going to place a class for and I don't think any judge really cares whether they do or not, it's just how can you get that horse with the best performance. Now, if you go in there, to say to a horsemanship, um, a showmanship class, in a showmanship class, they, you are, a portion of your score is on grooming. And so, if one's lost a shoe, <laughs> you need to have both of them on. If their shoes are really overgrown, that's, um, those are things that in a showmanship class, a judge might notice as far as the overall grooming and care of that horse. But you can certainly go into showmanship with a barefooted horse if they're trimmed up neat and look nice. Okay, you can go into horsemanship, you can go into any class at a horse, horse show that they don't have shoes on if your horse performs fine. You know, so you just need to have, you know, two or four or none, not three or one or whatever. And that mainly is going to affect the performance of your horse. If he's only got one on, then, you know, he's not going to be like you running down the road with one shoe on. You're, you're not going to be the same as if you had them, you know, what's all two or four. Yep. So. Anything else? We'll wait for our satellite folks to see if they've got some more questions for us all, for us also. Um, any kind of situations you guys have been in, things that you've seen or noticed or run across or problems that you might have had. And don't let your little microphones intimidate you. <laughs> <laughs> You're awfully quiet group tonight. As soon as we turn the TV off, then you'll start talking. <laughs> yeah. I've got another question. I haven't been in, in Lincoln that, that much. I've been here about three years. How do you find a, um, a good accredited <laughs> farrier? <laughs> I've had a couple problems. I have had a couple problems yeah. with a couple farriers. That's yeah. a very good question and can be a very, um, very challenging situation to be in. Um, there, y there are associations that will, you know, accredit the farriers, they're not required, there's not a licensing agency, okay, um, so um, probably the best bet, for example, um, 
you might you know have need of a new shoe or a new farrier in your particular area or you've been dissatisfied with the care that you've had and you want to make a change I would start visiting with other people and other veterinarians okay um, who have they had a positive working relationship who haven't they and things that you want to find out about is one how good are they and how reliable are they because we've all been in the situation where we scheduled an appointment and they just never showed up. I mean, people get late, they get in a mess with a particular horse and they might be delayed um, and you understand that, but it'd be nice if you got a phone call or, you know, sometimes they just never, never appear and you've waited all day. Um, so those are some things that you'd want to find out, you know, and I like visiting with some of the different veterinarians to see who, I've, I'll visit with other barns to see who they're using. Um, other veterinarians. Um, boarding stables are a good one because where's somebody, a place that has a volume of horses, you know, rather than just one or two, and see who's had good experiences. But it's a challenge. It's, it's hard. Um, anybody else have any good suggestions? But th that's a very difficult one, especially in our area where we've got a lot of horses, but we're not like we're in an area that's got a ton of horses. So um, they're out there, but you have to hunt and choose and hunt and find them. Yeah. It's, 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 I wish I had a really good, I don't have a list to hand you, sorry. <laughs> you know, the other thing is you also set up and need to see how available they are because things are going to happen and you might have them set up on that regular eight weeks rotation, whatever it might be, and then somebody loses a shoe, okay? So you have to see if, if you've got this wonderful guy and you're here in Nebraska, but they come up once every so often from Kansas or Oklahoma. That horse loses a shoe, you better have a backup person because, you know, you need to get something tacked back on um, before your regular person can get there. So you need to, to be able to have that sometimes. Yeah. Yep. So... Press your thing down. <laughs> um, I had shown an older horse, and his front feet um, had almost kind of like squared off. Uh huh. And that's just from just kind of sweeping his feet as he moves along. Mm -hmm. But as the time went on, his shoulder um, he had arthritis show up. Is that part of maybe from that hoof doing that that it wasn't? You know, coming off well, or moving right? Well, if you think back, the whole idea of form to function, it's probably all related, not from dragging his foot, but more from probably the way he was conformed. It's probably more the way his conformation is caused him to keep drag his feet like that that ended up with some arthritis in his shoulder, okay? So he might have been a horse that just didn't pick his feet up very well or the way his shoulder and stuff and his body was made, he tracked that way. You'll see that on a lot of horses that um, when in their front feet, when they wear their feet, they'll square their toes off. You see the feral horses will have kind of foot square toed. They even sell shoes for certain horses that are square on the toe. Um, so a horse that's square in his toe, you don't worry about it because that's kind of a natural way that they wear them. But you know, as he aged, had those other problems. It, it's all biomechanics and form to function and it all goes together and fits in. It's not just because of this. The reason he went this way because of the way the rest of him was probably put together and sometimes just the way he carries himself. Like I love the old horse that we showed you because he breaks the rules, you know, and he shouldn't move the way he moves, but he does, you know, because he's not conformed to do what he does, but he does it. <laughs> so I don't know if that helps you, but it, 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 the whole picture all usually goes together, you know. So, and I think just like anything else, sometimes some of them are just going to get some problems that they're just going to get them. You know. So.